Hi and welcome to the Devala Cookery Channel. Today we're going to be making what most people around the world would say is the national British takeaway dish, which is fish and chips of course. Now I'm going to show you how to make the perfect fish and chips with the lightest fish batter you've ever tasted and the crunchiest chips. In fact, there are two secret ingredients that I've been using in fish batter for years that I've never told anybody about, but I'm going to reveal them in this video today. So, as usual, a full list of those ingredients will be given at the end of the video. Let's crack on and have a look at those ingredients of what we're going to need for today. So in order to make the ultimate fish and chips, what we're going to need obviously is some potatoes. So here we've got Maris Piper potatoes and they've been peeled and chipped into fairly chunky chips. You're looking at, with regard to portion size, between 150 grams and 200 grams of uncooked potato per serving. We've got 100 grams of plain flour, 150 millilitres of water. So this is in a bottle because what I normally do is place the water into the freezer for about half an hour before I mix the batter and that makes sure that the batter is nice and chilled. We've got some sea salt to season the fish with. As far as the fish is concerned, I've got two small pieces of cod, but you can use any white fish. We've obviously got some oil because we're going to be deep fat frying, so I've got some sunflower oil here to deep fat fry. And then the two secret ingredients I was talking about before, one is bicarbonate of soda, so we need half a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda, and we're going to mix that with half a teaspoon of citric acid. So citric acid you can pick up online, I get mine from a discount store in the UK called Wilco's or Wilkinson's and you can actually find it in any homebrew shop. It's used by people who make their own wine in order to alter the acidity of the, the wine as they're making it and it's read, readily available uh, citric acid and it's those two ingredients that will create a carbon dioxide within the batter itself and that produces a really light and crisp batter. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to prep both the fish and the potato before we cook them. So the first thing we want to do is just to prep the fish. So nice and easy, all we want to do is to just place some sea salt onto the fish. Okay, so putting sea salt onto the fish, it'll do two things. One is it'll obviously season the fish, but the second thing is we're going to place the fish now into the fridge while we prep the potatoes for the chips. And not only will it season the fish, but what the salt will do is it'll actually draw out some of the moisture and firm up the fish prior to frying. Really helps with the, the texture of the fish when it's in the fryer. So this will now go into the fridge while we prep the potatoes uh, before we fry them. Next thing we need to do then is we need to prep the actual potato themselves. So we've peeled and chipped the Maris Piper potatoes into fairly chunky chips. I've also rinsed them in cold water, so the water is now nice and clear. To get rid of as much of the potato starch as possible, so two reasons we need to get rid of as much of the potato starch out of the potato when we're cooking in hot oil. So one of them is that potato starch has the ability to actually stick the potato together. So if we don't get rid of the potato starch before, or as much of the potato starch as we can before it goes into hot oil, what happens is you've got the possibility of the potato actually clumping together, which obviously isn't, isn't good. The second thing is, Potato starch and hot oil don't mix. Potato starch has the ability to destroy the oil. So in your local chippy, for example, they try and get rid of as much potato starch as possible so that their oil lasts a lot longer and obviously it doesn't affect profits. So we've done that now. The next thing we need to do with the potatoes is we're going to simmer these in boiling water for five minutes and that will produce a really light and fluffy chip at the, the end of the process. So the next stage is to actually simmer the potato in salted boiling water for no longer than five minutes. 
So I've transferred the potato into the uh, boiling water. That's obviously reduced the heat. I've waited now until the water starts to simmer again. Then I've set the timer and that's timed for five minutes. So you want to be as exact as possible. We want to create a nice fluffy chip at the end of the process. What we don't want to do is cook the potato for so long that it actually falls apart and you, you lose that shape of the chip. So five minutes, no longer. Then what we're going to do is drain the chips, put cold water onto them to stop them from cooking any longer and then I'll show you the next part of the process. The next thing to do with this so I talked about potato starch with raw potato and how that can hinder the, uh, the hot oil frying pro process. The second thing is the amount of water vapor or the amount of water that is actually within the potato. Now, if we have a lot of water within the potato when it goes into the hot oil, what you'll end up with is a very dark product at the end or very dark chip at the end of the frying process, but you'll still have water retained in the potato. So although they'll come out of the hot oil quite crisp, literally within 20 or 30 seconds, the chip will become very limp and sad and it's really not what you want. So in order to produce a really crisp, light fluffy chip or fry at the end of the process, we need to get as much of the water content out of the potato as possible before it goes into the hot oil. So the next thing we need to do is dry the actual potato out before it goes into the hot oil and there's two ways to do that one is to place it the potato actually onto a rack and then put the rack into the fridge overnight inside the fridge you've got very dry air so an overnight process of, of drying the chip out will be perfect I don't have that luxury so what I normally do is whenever I'm doing this uh, anything to do with raw potato cooking in hot oil and I'm doing it the same day I'll turn the oven on to 50 de degrees centigrade for about 15 minutes, then turn the oven off, place the potato onto the rack, and then this rack will go into the oven, and depending on what you're making, so I have done another video on, on how to do potato uh, kettle chips or, or crisps, and that process is between 15 minutes and half an hour. For something like chips, which are a lot thicker, I'm going to dry these potatoes in the oven, in the warmed oven, where the oven's been uh, on for 15 minutes, but then switched off. I'm going to do this for an hour, and that will definitely dry the potato out enough so that we're going to get a nice crisp chip at the end of the frying process. So all we need to do is, is place the chips or the potato onto the rack. And as you can see, the vast majority of these potatoes, because we've only simmered for five minutes have stayed intact there are some that have broken up the smaller ones but what we're going to get there is we're going to get a really crisp edge on there that's going to be delicious right so that's all of the potato out i've just got bits in there now so as i said this will go into that warmed oven for an hour that'll really dry out the potato and create a really nice crisp chip at the end of the process. So the potato has been in the warmed oven for about 45 minutes. It's got another 15 minutes to go so we can start to prepare and cook the fish. So the fish is the first thing that we put into the hot oil. That can then be uh, drained on a, on a rack, put into a warmed oven while we actually cook the chips. So I just want to explain a little bit about the actual batter itself. So with batter we need flour, we need a liquid water, we need salt in order to season that, and then we also need carbon dioxide. And the reason we need carbon dioxide is the bubbles within, created by the carbon dioxide create a really fluffy light batter, and that's really what we're trying to achieve. So there are a number of ways that we can introduce carbon dioxide into the batter. One is that we can use a carbonated liquid, something like soda water or beer. The problem I've got with that is we need a really smooth batter and to do that we need to actually beat the mixture. So when we use a carbonated liquid, what we'll potentially do is beat a lot of the carbon dioxide out of the mixture in that process of actually creating that smooth batter. We do retain some carbon dioxide but not a great deal. The second thing we can do is we can actually introduce agents into things like the flour. So we can use self-raising flour, 
we can use baking powder in there. That creates carbon dioxide after the beating process, which is a lot better. However, that is a long process. It takes up to half an hour to produce the carbon dioxide. And the longer we leave the batter, the more the gluten takes effect and it becomes, for me personally, the coating on the fish becomes a bit too gooey and, and, and doughy, so I don't like that. That's why I came up with a method of citric acid and bicarbonate of soda, because it's almost an instant injection of, of carbon dioxide. The other thing we use is obviously we're chilling down the liquid, so we're chilling down the water as much as possible and that has two effects. One is that a very cold batter will retain a lot more carbon dioxide. The second thing is it has almost like a shock value. So very cold batter going into very hot oil will produce an even crisper batter, which is obviously uh, the end game for us. So let's have a look now at how to prepare the fish and let's fry it off. We've got our 100 grams of flour and we've got 150 milliliters of very cold water so this has been in the fridge for about half an hour we've taken our half a teaspoon of citric acid and half a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda and we've actually mixed that together but we keep that to one side now we don't want that to get wet at all we don't want any of the water to come into contact with that just yet we need to actually mix the batter first so we take some salt and just season the flour and then start to mix in the water. So this will create quite a thick batter. So that's the batter mixed. The way to test it is to coat the back of a spoon and then run your finger down the centre and if it doesn't come together it's the right consistency. So from here we're now going to prep the fish and then at the very last minute we're going to add the citric acid and bicarbonate of soda mix. So the oil is now up to temperature. What we need to do now is mix in the citric acid and bicarbonate of soda mix into the actual batter. So before I do that I just want to show you what the batter looks like, a traditional batter looks like. So there's literally no air in there whatsoever. Well, it is a nice batter. So what I'm going to do now is introduce this mix and show you what happens. So we mix that in well. I don't know if you, can, hopefully you can see that on the camera, but there's already um, carbon dioxide being produced. And this is now becoming a very aerated batter. And we're going to leave that for about a minute, no longer than a minute, and then we're going to start to coat the fish. So we now need to actually coat the fish in the batter. There is no need to flour the actual fish first. This batter will stick very nicely to the actual fish. You can see all the air bubbles in there. To coat this as best you can. It's a fairly tight space here, so I'm just trying to do it correctly. So we need to drain all of the excess off. And then working away from you in the batter, we just need to place the fish in there nice and gently. So we're going to cook this fish for a few minutes on one side and then we're going to turn the fish over and then leave it to cook for the remainder of the time. We're looking at about 10 minutes at 170 degrees centigrade to actually get this fish cooked to perfection. This is a very light batter so you have to be really careful when you're handling the fish. Uh, there's, there's obviously a lot of uh, carbon dioxide bubbles within the batter which makes it really light and crisp but you do have to be careful with it because it is fairly fragile. So this fish has now been cooking for three or four minutes on one side. I'm hoping that the camera can pick up just how light and airy this batter is. We want to very carefully turn this over now to cook on the other side. If 
obviously we're dealing with hot oil so safety is paramount so this will carry on cooking now so in total we're looking at about 10 minutes but you want to handle the fish as least as possible because this batter is extremely light and crispy but it's extremely delicate as well okay so that's our fish perfectly cooked been in there for about 10 minutes so this will now go onto a wire rack onto this wire rack we've already done one piece of fish so we drain this off place it onto the wire rack next to the other piece so this will now go into a warmed oven while we actually do the the chips themselves so i don't know if you can see this but i've i've broken away the side of of this batter just so you can see just how light that batter is all of these honeycomb bits um, just perfectly crisp and a very very light batter that's produced so these are the potatoes perfectly dry now from the warmed oven I've turned the uh, oil up to 190 degrees uh, centigrade waiting obviously for that to get up to temperature and then what we're going to do is we're going to just place half the potato into the basket and cook these in two batches and the reason for doing that is we don't want the oil itself to actually reduce in heat too much I want to try and re retain that 190 degrees if possible okay so that's the basket loaded up we're at temperature so I'm just going to fry those up So I just want to show you this now. So these are the chips which are cooked. There's hardly any bubbling coming from the chips, which means that most of the water is actually out of the chip. They're floating on the surface. They're still quite a light colour. So these are going to remain very crisp. They're not going to go soggy, which is what I was used to in the past before I learned how to actually prepare raw potato properly for the fryer. So these are still fairly light in colour, uh, a nice even colour so they're not, not that dark, they're very crisp uh, and they just cook to perfection. So this just shows that the effort in getting the actual water content out of the potato is well worth it. So these are now going to be drained then placed into a bowl. which has some uh, absorbent kitchen paper in there. These are going to stay warm in the oven until we do the second batch. Okay, so let's have a look at what we've actually got here. So if we look at the actual chips themselves, so they've got a hard outer shell with almost like fresh air and mashed potato on the inside. And because we've taken as much of the water out of the chip as possible, before it goes into the hot oil, these will remain crisp. As far as the batter on the fish goes, again, I don't know if you can see, but all this sort of honeycomb structure within it, very light, very uh, crisp, done to absolute perfection. So if you follow the steps in the video, I guarantee this will be the best fish and chips that you've ever made. Fish and chips. In Britain, that's our national takeaway dish, so it should be done correctly. The other thing is, when I was a young lad, and that was a long time ago, fish and chips was a cheap Friday evening treat. Now fish and chips at my local chippy is £7.50. That's not a cheap Friday night treat, that's a proper meal price. It's the same price as we pay for Indian or, or Chinese takeaways. So it needs to be done properly. If you follow all of the steps within the video, and obviously I've now given you the secret ingredients for, for the batter, if you follow that, you'll end up with the same results. And I can guarantee it'll be one of the best, if not the best, fish and chips you've ever tasted. Please subscribe to the channel. And as usual, if you've enjoyed the video, hit the like button. There's a lot of uh, hungry people behind the camera at the moment waiting to come in, and I've been told I can only try one chip. So that'll do me. Mm. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. Thanks for watching.